Hi everyone. Good morning this morning. I know it's been a while. Yes, come in, zoom out, come back, zoom out. That's how we do. So, but you know now, as usual, I bring to you the word of God. I mean, that is what you need to sustain you in these times and season. That is what you need to anchor your life on. The word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That is what you need to anchor your life on. And as usual, I bring to you a word. Now today we're talking about a very interesting topic and you will know why it's interesting you will let me get right into it today we'll be looking at a topic go back to your first love hmm i want to talk about going back to your first love i'm talking about your you know your relationship well it's also a relationship but i mean your first love which is god as a christian your first love should be awesome and savior and why do we need to remind you to go back to your first love? Why do we need to? So I'll take you to the book of Revelation. Hmm. I know when people hear the book of Revelation, there's something is like a gung 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 kind of vibes, like hey, Revelation is always about end time, end time, end time. But I mean, if they don't talk about end time, how would you know? How would you know? So let's talk about it. So let's start from Revelation chapter two, verse. Um, we we'll start from verse one to. Mm, to eight so quickly so the angel of the church in ephesus writes this is the message from the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and who walks among the seven gold lampstands i know what you have done i know how hard you have worked and how patient you have been i know that you cannot tolerate evil people and that you have tested those who say they are apostles but are not and have found out that they are liars you are patient you have suffered for my sake and you have not given up but this is what i have against you did you hear that so jesus was basically telling them that okay this is like he was patting them at the back that this is what you guys have done yes you guys have been against the false prophets i know you guys speak them out and you guys identify them yes you guys have done this you guys have done that now but this is what i have against you you do not love me now as you did at first hmm a version i think it's amplified that spoke about um, go back to your first love i think so but he said you do not love me now as you did at first Think how far you have fallen. Turn from your sins and do what you did at first. If you don't turn from your sins, I will come for you and take your lampstands from its place. But this is what you have in your favor. You hate what the Nicolaitans do as much as I do. If you have ears, then listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. To those who win the victory, I will give the right to eat the fruit of the tree of life that grows in the garden of God. Don't forget that. Oh God. <laughs> now, that, 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 that passage should just take you back there. Okay. 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 Like, God, Jesus was basically telling them that you guys have been true. You know, your service to, to, your service to me have been superb. You guys have been doing everything. You've been going to church. You've been doing everything, you know. You know, let's even bring it down to our own physical churches you've been going to church you've been leading praise and worship you've been doing all of that and your heart is not right like you know how people just put up um an appearance or put like more like they make you feel like oh yes they are right here with god they are in this thing this thing that because of their, their act of service in, in mind you it's not bad for you to be to service to to walk in the church it's not bad for you to um volunteer and all of that is not bad it's very important for us to do that but when your heart is not right then it becomes like it's, it's more like you're just putting up a show because we are not the one that will give you you're not supposed to seek human approval you know you're not supposed to seek approval from us for us to say oh well done we're not the ones to give you that is god and the only person that sees the heart is god so the, your major focus should be that am i in right here with god am i in alignment with god is my heart posture right that like that should be your major major that should be like your number one thing to look out for and you know there's just something that your relationship with god births the service you bring that to him and that will even make you not even um that will make you not at or that will make you not serve god like with a grumpy 
kind of hard posture. Like you would do it out of your love for him. Now when God said, he, he listed all these things to them that, oh, you guys have done right, you guys have done this, you guys have called out the first prophet. I mean, right now, that's like what's going on. People are identifying, oh, this, one's, this one is saying the doctrine is this, that, that, that. Okay, we know that is good. You that are calling them out, how right is your heart with God? How is only God that sees the heart? And that's why anybody can just come up and say, yes, this, this, that, that, that. Because we can't see it. And you can put up a show. Meanwhile, not knowing that we are actually not the ones that will vet you at the end, it's still God that will vet you. And so God was telling them that your heart is not right. You don't love me anymore. You're just doing this act of, oh, we just want to do this so that people to seek approval from, to seek validation from people. Meanwhile, I that am vetting you know that you don't love me anymore. And I mean, why would you, why would you just, I, I, I'm sure this is for somebody. Eh? You have been putting acts. You have just been there, you have just been doing your thing, putting up the pressure and people are just saying, ah, well done, well done. Is that the well done you want? Is that the well done you want? Is that the well done you want from human beings? The well done you should seek eh, is actually the one from God. I think 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 18 talks about we don't seek approval from humans, we seek approval, the person that we seek approval from is from God. And it's so true. Who am I doing all these things for? If I'm doing it for human, then who? Eh? Why? Why should I stress myself? <laughs> But because I know I'm doing it for God and God sees the heart, He looks at the heart, God vets the heart, that is what He's always about. And so, when you know that, having that in mind, you know that, okay, I need to go back to God. I need to go back to my first love. I need to rekindle the relationship that I have with God. And I need to. And why do you even need this? It's not just because we we're just it's not, we're not just saying just you know go and start a relationship, you know, as for just for uh, just you know just for for doing sake. No. Because it helps you, it's out of the relationship with God that bets a lot of things. You feel like the word of God is not, you are trying to apply the word of God in your life and it's not working. There are many things that will make it not work. I mean, sin is there. But when your heart posture is not right, most definitely you are going to be all about, oh, I just need to do this thing quickly. And, and let me tell you something. Hmm. If you ever think one day will come that you'll be satisfied with all that you got from God and you will not need God, <laughs> You are joking. All the days of your life, till Jesus comes, we will need God in every phase and every season of our life. Just to put that out there. And let me take you back to... Um, let me take you back to Matthew chapter 24 from verse 23. That said, Then, if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it. For false Messiahs and false prophets will appear. They will perform great miracles and wonders in order to deceive even God's chosen people, if possible. Listen, I have told you this before the time comes. Or, listen, I've told you before the time comes. Hmm. Yeah. Or, if people should tell you, look, he's out in the desert, don't go there. Or, if they say, look, he's hiding there, don't believe it. For the Son of Man will come like the lightning, which flashes across the whole sky from the east to the west, to the northern south. That's not it. Wherever there is a dead body, the vultures will gather. Now let's talk about this quickly. I like verse um, 24 that said, it said, the parts B said, from great miracles, no, it said, they will, they will perform great miracles and wonders in order to deceive even God's chosen people, if possible. Now there's, there's an if possible statement there. There is. That means, it is possible to be deceived. You are calling yourself Christian, 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 and you can be deceived by the false prophet. It is possible. And let me just let me just help you, not to stress you. One of the ways that you could actually pull it out, like you you will not fall under this category of people that that are being deceived, is when you know the word of God. Please, I beg you. If you are still part of those that just go to church. I'm just gonna listen, close your Bible and that is all. Go to church again, just gonna listen and that is all. I beg you, it is not healthy. You need to feed your spirit, man. And one of the things that you need to do is, in this time, in these last days, if you are not aware that we are currently in the last days, I need to tell you, we've been in the last days since the time of Paul, but I mean, it's giving, the last days is not giving, giving now. <laughs> but if you are still in that category, please do not go that healthy for you. You need to know the word of God. You need to be in the you need to be in alignment with God so that 
you, you need the sensitivity of the spirit. If you don't even read the word of God, how would you even know that the spirit of God is in you? How would you even know that you need to activate the spirit of God in you so you can be sensitive to even your surroundings, to people that you meet? Like you need it. It's not just for, oh, eh, I need to go to heaven. That's why. No, it's because you need it to stay healthy. The devil is not playing with you. I keep saying this, he's not playing with you. Neither should you play with him. And one of the ways to always overcome it is by staying in tune, to be in right tune with God. Because the Spirit of God is always there to guide you, to give you, to guide you, basically. And when you are being sensitive to the Spirit, it will help you, it will, it will save you from some of the situations that you are going through. It will save you from some of the so for some from some of the things that you found yourself in that you probably wouldn't have if you actually had the Spirit of God activated in you. Now, if you don't know the Word of God, you fall under the category of people that are being deceived by this false prophet. I mean, the Bible already said it. They already told us. I say even verse 22, I said, listen, I have told you this, I have told you this before the time comes. It is important for you to know now that I have told you this so before the time comes. So you will not say, ah, they didn't tell us so, can you come, can you come? Ha, they play. But that's why they play. <laughs> so let's go to um, verse 37. Same 24 verse 37 said, the coming of the Son of Man will be like that be like what happened in the time of Noah. I just like that. If you've not read about Noah, or if, if you heard it, the only memory you have of Noah was maybe when you were still little, then when you're telling the act of God, can you come, can you come? please, I beg you, go read about the time of Noah because a lot of things happened. A lot of things happened. That period was when, I mean, the heavenly beings were, they were sleeping with women that they found very attractive. They gave birth to giants. They did a lot of things on earth that God himself, that was the first time that I ever saw God regressing <laughs> that he really created them. God himself, let's quickly go to verse, um, yes, verse, Genesis 6, verse um, 5. Let's see, when the Lord saw how wicked everyone on earth was and how evil their thoughts were all the time, he was sorry that he had ever made them and put them on earth. He was so filled with regret that he said, I will wipe out these people I have created and also the animals and the birds because I am sorry that I made any of them. That was God speaking. Because in they had the see the devil was the devil and his fallen angels, they were really at it. They were they were really at it. They did a lot of things that were like God was like, ha bad no, just this small thing, I don't take a that God just say whatever. You understand what I mean? But now verse 8 said but the Lord was pleased with Noah. Now back to what Matthew 24. He said verse Genesis 6 verse 8 says, But the Lord was pleased with Noah. Let's read 9 to um, 12. Then we'll go back to Matthew 24. He says, This is the story of Noah. He had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Noah had no fault and was the only good man of his time. In that period, while that whole thing was happening, look at the happenings of this world. Can you also be the Noah of this generation? Can you be the Noah? Can you be the one? Can you be the man that God will say, No, uh -uh. blessing is still standing right. And blessing pleased God. Call your name. I don't know your name, but <laughs> this person pleased God. And can you can you be that person? Like can you can you can you be that person that God will be like that God will spot and be like, no, this person is still pleasing me. Can you be that? Now he said he lived in fellowship with God, but everyone else was in was evil in God's sight, and violence had spread everywhere. God looked at the world and saw that it was evil, for the people were all living evil lives. Please, this hope, this passage, this short passage, it doesn't want sound familiar to you with everything that's happening presently in our day is does not sound familiar to you can you please be the knower of your generation can you please be the knower it's very important can you be the one that will still stand out that god will still say no i still have a man here i still have someone i can still use i see you know can you be the knower can you be the one that is still sensitive to hear the god that to still hear god because while the noise and everything while those people were being or while they were having evil thoughts evil desires you know sleeping with heavenly beings and all of that, give back to giants and all of that. But there was still a man that was somewhere that was still listening to God, that still had the sensitivity of the spirit to still hear from God, that was still in writing, that was still in fellowship with God. Can you be that man in this time and seasons? Can you put away the distraction? 
Can you put away the distraction and let God lead your life? Can you put away the distractions? Please put it away and let God lead you. Because he said the coming of he said the coming of the Lord will be like what? The time of Noah. That is just to tell you that the time where a lot of people are being distracted, a lot of people are not even aware, they're just going back their life, thinking that oh, the character of Jesus is just, you know, it's just made up. Hiya! I pity you. If you are still in that category, please, you need to change your mindset and seek God. And you know, there's just something good about God. The moment you surrender, the moment you tell God that, God, please have your way in my heart. God is just so good. He's going to, he's going to help you. All he has to do, all he just needs from you is that confession. Tell him you need him. It's not just enough for you to just accept God as your personal Lord and Savior. I'll be saved and that is all. That's where you stop that. No, there is still more growth because the enemy, the moment he has saved, the enemy is close to you. In fact, before you ever say the enemy has been close to you. It's only by the grace of God. God, that's why most of people are still on earth. Even for the grace of God, the devil is not trying to keep you alive. The devil is leading you through destruction. And it's only God that is still keeping you alive. With that mindset, you know that, ha, I'm not, you see, very good. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11 says, put on all the armor that God gives you so that you so that you'll be able to stand up against the devil evil street. For we are not fighting against human beings, but against the wicked spiritual forces and the heavenly world, the rulers, authorities, and the cosmic powers of this dark age. So put on God's armor now. Then when the evil days comes, you will be able to resist the enemy's attack. And after fighting to the end, you will stand hold and hold your ground. To tell you that there is a continuous fight, there is no stopping. There is a continuous fight. Every season of your life you get to, you have to contend with the enemy, and he's always there. And the only reason why you will come out of victory, because I mean, we are coming, we are speaking out of victory. The only reason why you're able to come out of come out victorious is when you allow God. It's when you fellowship with God, and that's why it's important for you to know that you need to fellowship with God for the rest of your life. And how do you fellowship with God? If you don't have a relationship with God, you cannot fellowship with Him. That's why you need a relationship with God. Out of that relationship with God, we bet plenty things that you don't have to be doing it just because of I said it. It will not be because you know the importance and you know that you need to do it. See, God, I have a lot to say, but let's just stop here. But I believe that this word has spoken to people and I hope that it's going to plant a seed in your hands that will germinate and God will do the increase. You know, and we just help you. All you have to do is to surrender to him. Just surrender to him. And if you are still in that category of people that were once there, that people just keep saying, ah, this person was once on fire. Ha, please, go back and be on fire. It's very important. Don't ever, when you start your work with God, don't think that you're ever going to stop. It's a continuous work. The moment you have a mindset of, oh, at the point that we rest, ah, he he, he's going to be knocking at your door at that period. Hmm, my dear, don't do it. It's a continuous work. Ask God for the strength. Ask God for the capacity to, and the mindset to withstand everything that will be thrown at you. And God is always there with you at every season. All you have to do is just to seek Him. You have no power of your own. You are warring against an ancient being. And the only person that can help you, that can contend with that, is another ancient being, the person that created that one, that is just doing his own thing. Eh? So you need God in your life. You need God very well. You need God. You need God in your life. And so I just pray that this word reaches as many as those that are still in that life. Go back to your first love. Go back to being in the relationship with God. Go back to having that sweet father and son, father and daughter relationship. It is very important. From there, it breaks a lot of things. Once you get your relationship right with God, you see that everything will fall in place. You see that everything will fall in line. So. My charge this morning is that go back to your first love. Go back to him. Go back to your first love. Yes. Thank you. And God bless you. Bye.